Know the enemy and know yourself. In 100 battles, you will never be in peril. The Art of War is one of the most widely read books about martial arts, which is a phrase that means the arts of Mars. This presentation is about examining the driving force behind the art of war, the force of Mars in our consciousness, what it is, and how we can use it. Scholars generally agree the art of war was written somewhere between 530 and 480 BC. The author is Sun Tzu, of whom very little, if anything at all, is known with certainty. What we do know is that he was a master of the many considerations of war on the material, mental, and spiritual levels. It is possible to study Sun Tzu's understanding of Mars because the planets not only exist outside of us in the sky, but also within us. The planets are individual layers of human nature, and please see my previous videos on this channel about each planet's unique force in our consciousness. The written reports on my website go into detail about these forces. My natal chart written report is between 12,000 and 15,000 words, depending on your particular chart, and includes many other personal astrological details. Please see the link to my website, jmvedic.com, in the description of this video for more information. The first verse in the first chapter of The Art of War reads, War is a matter of vital importance to the state, the province of life or death, the road to survival or ruin. It is mandatory that it be thoroughly studied. In the context of the individual self, this verse can be read as, Conflict is of vital importance to the self. The stakes are life or death the road to success or failure in our endeavors. Studying Mars, the force in our consciousness that addresses and resolves conflict, is mandatory for achieving any level of success in life. In order to understand Mars in the context of the art of war, we're going to first see what the Mars force does in our consciousness, what its agenda is. Mars's agenda is to solve tangible problems, to act instinctually and intelligently under survival pressures of any kind. It's the use of our physical energy and our ability to work with teammates and associates. It's our logistical mind. We use the Mars force to navigate present and future obstacles, anything that comes between us and our objectives. We use Mars to fix and improve on things, to rise above limitations through concentrated effort and is our willpower to survive through life's most difficult challenges. So who is Mars in the context of the art of war? The general is the protector of the state. So the commanding general in the art of war is the Mars force inside us all. Just as a soul needs a body to have an experience in the physical world, the planets need a body to manifest their agendas into reality. The zodiac is this body that the planets use to manifest their agendas. Each planet rules certain signs. Mars rules Aries and Scorpio, which are the actual worldly abilities of Mars. And the attributes required to be a good general that Sun Tzu describes is Mars using the abilities of Aries and Scorpio. Here is a list of the general's attributes derived from Mars and Mars's signs that I've identified from the art of war that enable a person to work to master their own Mars force. The general's attributes are strategy and adapting strategy, efficiency, movement, terrain or ground conditions, engineering, ethical conduct, emotional intelligence, concealing intentions and the employment of secret agents, and transmutation of the mundane. First we'll look at Aries, and how Mars uses Aries' abilities in the verses in the Art of War, and later we'll look at Mars and how he uses Scorpio's abilities. Aries. Aries is the first sign in the zodiac. Odd signs are masculine, and even signs are feminine. Aries being odd and therefore masculine makes Aries the external, action-based abilities of Mars. Aries gives Mars the hunger to achieve results in the material world, the drive to improve or fix our on-the-ground external reality. Aries is a horned mountain goat scaling rocky terrain, which signifies a person's ability to pioneer into sparse or challenging territory. 
A strong Aries makes a person a visionary and an innovator in whatever activities they engage in. Aries gives us the ability to fearlessly travel into unknown places and do things that others may see as impossible. The body part of Aries is our forehead, which includes our brain, and represents the logic needed to tackle problems head on. Aries is a movable sign, meaning that it is an initiator energy that can dynamically change course and forge a new path, and is especially driven to begin new things. Aries is the fire element, and fire represents our inspiration. Mars uses Aries to be inspired to rise above obstacles. Fire is also the energy and electricity flowing through our body, which is the power that allows us to rise above mediocrity. Aries is motivated by Rajas, which are the activities that we are inspired to do that will improve our material situation. Rajas does this by collaborating with others so that things run smoother and will ideally make everyone's lives more enjoyable. And finally, Aries is the Kshatriya class, the political and societal leaders whose responsibility is to establish justice and fair treatment. Mars uses Aries' Kshatriya abilities in order to command and administrate over subordinates in a hierarchy, but also sees oneself as a single piece of the larger puzzle, and that every part of the structure must work cohesively for the structure to function. Strategy Once a conflict has arisen, the very next step is to create a strategy to deal with it. Mars is the quintessential strategizer, making a rational, multifaceted plan of action based on the available facts on the ground. Mars rules our eyes and our sense of sight, literally what lies in front of us, and figuratively the ability to see new and original possibilities. It is our ability to foresee obstacles and produce step-by-step -step approaches that address the most important details of the problem. Victory is the main object in war. What is of supreme importance in war is to attack the enemy's strategy. This is Sun Tzu's number one strategic recommendation. Foresee conflicts and address them before they even begin. Whatever the obstacle or threat is, prevent it from escalating and weaken it by applying pressure to its strongest points. Next best is to disrupt his alliances. The surface reading of this verse is divide and conquer, which is one of the classic and most reliable ways to ensure the enemy opposition remains isolated Individually, this means don't allow problems to compound on one another and take direct action when you see the potential for a problem to start causing other problems. For example, if a car motor has a damaged part, isolate your focus and fix that part so that it doesn't affect the other parts inside, which if left unaffected will trigger bigger and bigger problems under the hood. The next best is to attack his army. The worst policy is to attack cities. Attack cities only when there is no alternative. If cities are being attacked, you know the commander is either hastily belligerent, desperate, or has exhausted every other option without success. On the individual level, this verse is saying, avoid solutions that have a high cost as much as possible, because they usually cause repercussions that afterwards become more and more difficult to control. Those skilled in war subdue the enemy's army without battle. They capture his cities without assaulting them and overthrow his state without protracted operations. In life, most conflicts don't resort to violence. Think of most political disagreements, economic power struggles both locally and internationally, personal disputes, or even something as simple as getting lost on the highway and needing to map out the correct route to get back on track. These all require effective planning and execution, but not physical conflict. Imagine if you are a store owner, and another store is opening up near you that will sell the same products you have at competing prices. A conflict is now afoot, because you need to protect your interest, which is your income, and if you don't address the situation, your survival is potentially at stake. A good strategy is to figure out methods to continue attracting your existing customers while also attracting new ones, such as finding new products to sell 
investing in advertising to expand your market reach, etc. The worst way to handle this conflict will be to physically attack the other store. In general, sabotage and violence are a sign of weak strategic thinking, a lack of intelligence, creativity, and originality. The heavier the force we use, the heavier the response we will receive in the form of blowback. Adapting Strategy The art of war is to follow the enemy situation in order to decide on battle. After we've built a strategy, it should never be treated as a static thing. Once the strategy has been enacted, we need to assess the progress of the plan thus far, and then adapt the plan as necessary to the evolving situation. This is Mars, a planet of logic, using Aries the brain to break down the individual parts of the strategy and to analyze each part specifically and how each part is affecting the whole process. The more we know the ins and outs of a problem, the greater the chances are of solving it. This recalls the adage, knowledge is power, and people with a strong Mars or a strong Aries in their chart very much embody the same, using every detail to their advantage. Now the crux of military operation lies in the presence of accommodating oneself to the designs of the enemy. People who have a weak Mars in their natal chart and specifically when it is being starved by a Saturn conjunction, will often stubbornly stick to a plan of action even when it's failing or not showing positive results. Since they are struggling to adapt their strategy in the midst of mounting problems, they eventually feel a sense of frustration, which is the negative emotion related to a malaffected Mars. If Mars is being starved by his enemy Mercury, these people often become overwhelmed with the options, and are unable to decide on a course of action. When there are too many choices, or they're unable to focus their energy on just one thing, the result is also frustration. An overactive Mars can cause a person to be constantly butting heads with others and then causing unnecessary conflicts, also resulting in frustration. A strong and healthy Mars in a natal chart, when exalted in its own signs or helped by his friends Sun and Jupiter, will be constantly making adjustments to previously laid plans and making the necessary changes to keep the goal on track. Oftentimes it is necessary to adjust the goal itself to be more realistic about your prospects of success. Sometimes even admitting defeat is the wisest and most intelligent course of action to prevent further negative consequences and to focus your efforts where they'll have a better chance of being successful. As an astrologer, one of the most common disruptions to martial energy I see is the inability to properly strategize and make adjustments, either from miscalculations or stubbornly following a line of action that is not producing the desired results, thus causing a deepening frustration. Efficiency To win 100 victories in 100 battles is not the height of skill. To subdue the enemy without fighting is the height of skill. This is a very important passage from Sun Tzu, which is saying that fighting and winning is not as efficient as winning without fighting. When the army engages in protracted campaigns, the resources of the state will not suffice, for there has never been a protracted war from which a country has benefited. Efficiency needs to be stressed and remain a consistent focus because conflicts and especially war are inherently extremely costly. So the less time, money, and energy we spend doing it, the longer we live and the higher chances of future prosperity. In short, a skilled Mars solves a problem as fast and as clean as possible. And since Mars is a fire planet, it has the ability to think creatively, which is an attribute of the fire element. Creative problem solving and generating a new way to visualize a problem and understand it better is an excellent Aries tool that helps a person find new ways out of a jam as long as the solution is an efficient one. Movement When campaigning, be as swift as the wind, in leisurely march, majestic as the forest, in raiding and plundering like fire, in standing, firm as the mountains, as unfathomable as the clouds, move like a thunderbolt. 
Sun Tzu uses the natural elements to analogize how to properly exert our physical energy. By syncing our movements to the environmental conditions, we amplify our physical potential and minimize the risk of injury. These are all attributes of a strong Mars using the athletic and agile abilities of Aries. Weigh the situation, then move. Speed is the essence of war. Take advantage of the enemy's unpreparedness. Mars is our physical exertion, which is why a strong Mars can give a person a sturdy and athletic body imbued with lots of energy to expend moving to and fro, as the Vedic sage Parashara describes Mars. A healthy Mars makes a person competitive and physically can make somebody quick or a strong athlete, which are all essential physical traits of a good warrior. Terrain. By weather, I mean the interaction of natural forces and the conduct of military operations in accordance with the seasons. By terrain, I mean distances and whether the ground is traversed with ease or difficulty. It is the highest responsibility of the general to inquire into the ground conditions with the utmost care. The Mars force in us is how we relate to raw physical land and our understanding of its inherent wealth and usefulness. A solid Mars in the natal chart can produce someone whose wealth is more based on hard assets rather than more transitory objects. Common examples would be a real estate agent or a landlord. It also means people who deal with resources that come directly from Mother Earth, like a gold miner, a trader in heavy metals, a dealer in precious gems, or a blacksmith who uses the Mars element fire, to transform raw material into something useful. Confirmation of the ground is of greatest assistance in battle. Therefore, to estimate the enemy's situation and to calculate distances and the degree of difficulty of the terrain, so as to control victory, are virtues of the superior general. He who fights with full knowledge of these factors is certain to win. He who does not will surely be defeated. On an individual level, we can think of terrain or ground conditions as the context of the conflict. Conflicts can occur in any number of places, our place of work, at school, in our neighborhood, with our relatives, in public, etc. Each of these locations requires a different approach, just as a battle in a mountain range is fought differently than a battle in a desert. And therefore I say, know the enemy, know yourself. Your victory will never be endangered. Know the ground, know the weather. Your victory will then be total. This is the second time Sun Tzu says the line, Know the enemy, know yourself. The first instance says that by heeding his advice, the general will be sure of victory. This second instance is about knowing the ground, and this can be understood as, By mastering the context of the battle, the victory will be even more unchallengeable and convincing. If you can master the context you're in, you become the master of the conflict. Very often, the context, and especially in the wilderness, is not under our direct control. So adjusting to your environment is a constant necessity. Being inexperienced or out of one's comfort zone is almost always a liability. Psychologically, terrain means knowing where we stand in our current circumstance in life where we see ourselves going. Notice these common phrases about our internal well-being have analogies to a physical location. Is your financial situation where you want it to be? Is your position at work providing for your needs? Is your relationship on firm ground? When we are clear about where we're coming from, we can then strategize effectively from that position and our actions can have the most beneficial results in accordance with our current status. If we're standing on shaky ground psychologically, we'll feel more insecure about our position, or if we doubt our ability to get out of a bad place, our actions will have far less power behind them, and we are much more apt to stumble or fail. Engineering By the art, I mean the organization, control, assignment of the appropriate ranks to officers, regulation of supply routes, 
and the provisions used by the army. Ares gives Mars the ability to engineer something, which means the ability for structural intelligence or mechanical intelligence. Engineering is building a structure that is logically organized and strong. We often associate engineering with constructing buildings after they've been designed by the architect, but it also means organizing people into functional arrangements to maximize their talents, working for a collective goal, and overseeing the many moving parts. This is what a leader does when handing out responsibilities to others in order to execute a mission. We say he or she is good at engineering an outcome, or engineering a sale, or engineering a victory. It is essentially the systematic organization of a team, or in war, the army. Good mechanics and engineers have to have a good Mars and Aries because they help a person see every detail as an important part of the whole, to have every nut and bolt accounted for, and to intricately understand how each piece of the structure is logically put together. Any group that's working toward a collective goal needs to mesh like a well-oiled machine. It is part of the chief engineer's job to make sure that every person in the equation understands their role, duty, and responsibility in relation to the rest of the group. Aries is the Kshatriya caste, who are the administrators or rulers of society. Mars oversees the hierarchical structure of the army, or organization, and enforces the rules of the organization. Companies have what are called bylaws, which are the rules of the company that govern the day-to-day -day operations. It is a Martian task to make sure that everyone is following these rules. If Mars is influencing the career factors in a chart, it can make a person become a police officer or an enforcer of rules of some kind. Aries is motivated by Rajas, which is the collaborative mindset to reach a common goal. This is why Mars in the chart indicates how well we work with our mutual associates, assistants, co-creators, and siblings, because Aries is Mars's tool for collaborative success. Generally, management of many is the same as management of few. It is a matter of organization. And to control many is the same as to control few. Here Sun Tzu is telling us that the way to manage one person is scalable to the way you should manage the organization as a whole. Think of the first stage when joining the army, boot camp, where every soldier is trained with the same vigor and is molded into a single fighting unit that is a microcosm of the whole army. A homogenization of the organization is necessary because it is the most efficient, stable, and rational way to maintain the integrity of the whole structure. If troops are punished before their loyalty is secured, they will be disobedient. If not obedient, it is difficult to employ them. If troops are loyal, but punishments are not enforced, you cannot employ them. To cultivate a uniform level of valor, to equalize courage, is the object of military administration. Sun Tzu clearly understands that an army is only as strong as its weakest link, and so there is great importance on instilling the martial virtues of honorable service, courage, and bravery to every single soldier and officer. Thus, command them with civility and imbue them uniformly with martial ardor, and it may be said that victory is certain. Scorpio Scorpio, the eighth sign of the zodiac, is an even sign which makes it female, meaning that it develops a person inwardly. The symbol is a scorpion, whose most prominent feature is their large and imposing stinger, telling any potential threat that their weapon is always at the ready. Scorpions have pincers, which is their ability to dig deep under the surface and thoroughly investigate something. Scorpions have bristles on their skin to detect subtle movements in their environment. Scorpio gives an ability for high sensory perception, and people with a Scorpio focus in their chart can have heightened situational awareness, and sometimes even psychic abilities. A Scorpion lives in a hole, and Scorpio produces an antisocial tendency as a protective mechanism. The hole symbolizes the secretive nature of Scorpio. These people will often conceal their true feelings to everyone except a very few select amount of people that they trust again as a survival mechanism, knowing that the more attention they draw to themselves, 
the riskier life becomes. Scorpions are very solitary creatures who must survive in extreme environments where there are many predators trying to eat them, and they can fight or flee with equal effectiveness. So it is Scorpio's ability to be guarded, fierce, and quick to evade a dangerous situation as necessary. The body part of Scorpio is the genitalia, which are sensitive and unprotected by bones, and so represents our vulnerabilities. Different from Aries' ability to initiate and create new original projects, Scorpio is a fixed sign, which gives the abilities of establishing security, stability, and finishing what has already begun. Scorpio is the water element, which is our psychology and the emotional undercurrents that flow through us. So the security that Scorpio is trying to establish is for psychological security and diving deep into oneself in order to become a more emotionally stable person. The goth and emo style, and the word emo is short for emotional, is very Scorpio because just when you look at the way they dress, it's saying, stand back because I'm dangerous. And this external signaling to others acts as a shield to protect what is usually a very sensitive and emotionally nuanced individual on the inside. Aries is Raj's motivated or seeking to collaborate with others to improve our lives. But Scorpio is motivated by Thomas, which are actions that are inspired to take care of problems and especially to deal with threats to our physical survival. And finally, Scorpio is the Brahmin caste, who are the spiritual leaders of the society. Brahmins seek to understand the deepest meanings of the universe, to cultivate wisdom or code of ethics, and then live by their code while teaching others their knowledge. So in summary, Mars, the fighter inside us, harnesses Scorpio's ability for internal focus to dig deep into one's own psychological and emotional vulnerabilities in order to learn about them and then transform them into powerful strengths and practical wisdom we can use for solving everyday conflicts. Mars uses Scorpio's abilities to be mysterious and secretive in order to protect oneself and survive through difficult situations. It is the Scorpio side of the art of war, where Sun Tzu displays his true mastery of Martian energy. The external aspect of a fight is the part that everybody sees, but the internal battle is the other side of the Mars coin and there can be no robust external strength without an equal or greater amount of internal strength. Aries is Mars's weapons on the external battlefield, and Scorpio is Mars's weapons for the internal battlefield. The Scorpio abilities that I've identified that Mars uses in the art of war are ethical conduct, emotional intelligence, adapting strategy, concealing intentions and the employment of secret agents, and transmutation of the mundane. Ethical conduct. The Tao is that which causes the people to be in harmony with their leaders, so that they will accompany them in life and unto death without fear of mortal peril. Those skilled in war cultivate the Tao and preserve the laws and are therefore able to formulate victorious policies. By command, I mean the general's qualities of wisdom, sincerity, humanity, courage, and strictness, who administers rewards and punishments in an enlightened manner. The Brahmin caste of Scorpio's abilities gives someone the ability to obtain higher levels of knowledge to establish a set of moral codes. Mars uses these codes as a guide for how to act, a conscience that tells us what we should or shouldn't do. And I say do because Mars is a masculine planet that is out in the world doing things, rather than contemplating or being receptive to things. Scorpio's ability to seek and discover deeper meaning, powered by Mars' strength of action, imbues a person with the discipline to act out one's concepts of right and wrong, to walk the walk. Sun Tzu says that a general who lives the Tao will be blessed with wisdom that aids his ability to fight the good fight. Mars is the force of our willpower but it is also the ability to have discipline and say no, our won't power. A strong set of ethics from Scorpio allows Mars to know when to restrain one's energy, to know when not to act. In life or death situations, this is just as vital as knowing when to act. 
this higher understanding of how we should use our energy is done in a Thomas, i.e. survivalist or a problem-solving way. The scorpionic energy is about applying higher knowledge in practical ways to be safe and avoid trouble. If the situation is one of victory, but the sovereign has issued orders not to engage, the general may decide to fight. If the situation is such that he cannot win, but the sovereign has issued orders to engage, he need not do so. Only with a strong and balanced moral compass, combined with the understanding of divine justice, can a general defy the king or queen's orders and still have a clear conscience, knowing that he is doing what is best for the state to which he serves. And therefore the general who in advancing does not seek personal fame, and in withdrawing is not concerned with avoiding punishment, but whose only purpose is to protect the people and promote the best interests of the sovereign, is the precious jewel of the state. Through Scorpio, Mars energy is able to comprehend the divine laws and become not just a fighter bent on victory, but a fighter for goodness and justice, even when the king or queen falls short in this respect and there is a need to supersede their command to do what is right according to his own inner moral guidance. A general with this quality is a precious jewel to the state in Sun Tzu's eyes. Emotional Intelligence Invincibility depends on one's self. There is a need to understand how our emotions are working within us and the logical patterns that they follow. Emotions are often described as irrational, but we feel happy for a reason, we feel sad for a reason, we feel guilty for a reason, etc. Not knowing why we're feeling something is a sign of a lack of the Scorpio ability to dig deep into our emotional consciousness and understand what's going on. If we are able to control our emotions and not let them control us, our Mars is using Scorpio to a high level. When emotions are out of control, they cannot serve our inner growth in a positive direction. It is the business of the general to be serene and inscrutable, impartial and self-controlled. The ideal general is stoic and confident in the face of danger, not allowing fear or emotions to get in the way of the mission. Any general that is not self-controlled runs the risk of being blinded by his momentary feelings and which can cause him to make very crucial mistakes. This is martial discipline applied to the inner life. There are five qualities which are dangerous in the character of a general. If reckless, he can be killed. If cowardly, captured. If quick-tempered, you can make a fool of him. If he has too delicate a sense of honor, you can belittle him. If he is of a compassionate nature, you can harass him. Know the enemy. We saw how Sun Tzu stressed studying the strategy of the enemy to know how to effectively combat his plan of battle. Here he is saying that it is just as important to know the psychological condition of your enemy in order to exploit his inner emotional weaknesses to emerge victorious. Adapting Strategy We discussed how adapting strategy is a tool of Aries in the context of the material conflict in front of us. But in the verses, Sun Tzu shows how to adapt strategy by using water as a metaphor, which is an excellent way to also understand the inner psychological need to adapt to the world around us, a quality of Scorpio. As we know, Scorpio is a water sign, which is a symbol for intuition and going with the flow to which life takes us. This makes adapting strategy both an Aries and a Scorpio quality. The ultimate in disposing one's troops is to be without ascertainable shape. An army may be likened to water, for just as flowing water avoids the heights and hastens to the lowlands, so an army avoids strength and strikes weakness. And as water shapes its flow in accordance with the ground, so an army manages its victory in accordance with the situation of the enemy. Just as water has no constant form, in war there are no constant conditions. Thus, one able to gain the victory by modifying his tactics in accordance with the enemy's situation may be said to be divine. The only way to control water is to have a container to hold it in place. Thus, Sun Tzu says to manufacture a situation where your enemy or the conflict 
is contained in a way that is advantageous to you, while you yourself remaining fluid and dynamic like water, so that the enemy is unable to contain you. So adapting strategy is not only a logical process, knowing the specifics of the problem and responding accordingly, but a feeling process, having the intuition to make a smart move and the perceptive ability to read any situation and think of the bristles on a scorpion. A good Mars will utilize both the Aries and Scorpio methods for adaptation to one's tactical advantage. Concealing Intentions all warfare is based on deception. This most famous passage from the art of war perfectly exemplifies the scorpionic quality of protecting oneself for the sake of safety and survival. This verse requires introspection and contemplation to truly grasp its elegantly simple yet profound meaning. It seems the more simple a saying is, the easier it is to misunderstand and this verse has been interpreted as a kind of ruthlessness to Sun Tzu's philosophy, which has some validity to it. But from the previous verses, we saw how the general must also have an enlightened sense of justice and practice ethical conduct by following the Tao. So to understand how all war is based on deception, we need to remember the earlier verse stating that the main object in war is to achieve victory. When victory is your primary concern, it is hard to deny the many inherent advantages when the opponent is being misled, especially in the context of the Kali Yuga Iron Age war conditions. I don't think that deception would have been such an important part of war strategy in the higher ages, as the spiritual and moral standard was higher for all people. The reason that governments have intelligence agencies is to gather information while concealing their own true intentions. Deception and misdirection are a top priority because the more confused an enemy is about your plans, the greater your range of potential actions. Furthermore, this verse is written in the first chapter, which shows its crucial importance to Sun Tzu and is perhaps the most concise and brilliant verses in the entire text. He then gives direct examples of how to deceive the enemy. When capable, feign incapacity. When active, inactivity. When near, make it appear that you are far away. When far away, that you are near. Offer the enemy a bait to lure him. Feign disorder and strike him. Anger his general and confuse him. Pretend inferiority and encourage his arrogance. Subtle and insubstantial, the expert leaves no trace. Divinely mysterious, he is inaudible. Thus, he is the master of his enemy's fate. The enemy must not know where I intend to give battle. For if he does not know where I intend to give battle, he must prepare in a great many places. He should be capable of keeping his officers and men in ignorance of his plans. He changes his methods and alters his plans so that people have no knowledge of what he is doing. Sun Tzu says that even the general's own officers must be left somewhat in the dark about his true motivations. If our companions need to know some information, we should share it, as that would be to our advantage. If they don't need to know something, it would be foolish to share it, as once the information is out in the open, it can jeopardize the mission in any number of ways. The need for secrecy also reveals the solitary nature of fighting a conflict. Scorpio energy can create a loner mentality, because it understands that the only true control we have in the world is over ourselves, and even our compatriots may be a threat to us as the next passages show. Concealing Intentions, the Employment of Secret Agents In the last chapter of The Art of War, Sun Tzu says that secret agents and spies incur the single greatest advantage when conducting a war, and the army's spies should be the closest confidants of the general. Indeed, spies maneuver in the upper echelons of the enemy's personnel to acquire critical information, and so naturally, they are the more elite soldiers who are in regular consultation with the general. Now the reason the enlightened prince and the wise general conquer the enemy whenever they move, and their achievements surpass those of ordinary men, is foreknowledge. What is called foreknowledge cannot be elicited from spirits, 
nor from gods, nor by analogy with past events, nor from calculations. It must be obtained from men who know the enemy situation. One can see the stark departure from the ancient Greeks' war strategy, whose generals would often consult oracles, such as the oracle at Delphi, in order to channel information from the spiritual world to use in battle. The oracles gave information they received about the future in a very cryptic way, and which could be interpreted in any number of ways. Generals who used this information incorrectly would suffer extreme losses, and sometimes their miscalculations cost them the entire war. Sun Tzu says that spirits and gods cannot be relied upon, nor even can military history give a full picture of the battle laid out presently in front of you. I would include astrology as a method that Sun Tzu would caution the use against when planning a war. Even Hitler had astrologers, and he ended up destroying not only half of Europe, but by 1945 Germany itself was completely decimated. Sun Tzu is, as always, more direct, stating that factual information about the enemy situation should be the crux of your strategy, and secret agents are the best way to get your hands on it. In fact, the most important resource in the world is information, even more important than food and water, because we need the right information to know where the food or water is. In daily conflict, being factual and honest about what you know and what you don't know is the safest way to conduct your efforts. If you don't know something, but fake it that you do know, this can be tactically advantageous in order to misdirect your opponent. But pretending to yourself that you do know when you really don't can turn out to be disastrous. Transformation of the Mundane Scorpio energy is all about transforming the intimate knowledge of ourselves into divine awareness of our current situation. Sometimes this awareness comes slowly in time, and other times this awareness comes in sudden epiphanies. In battle, there are only the normal and extraordinary forces, but their combinations are limitless. None can comprehend them all. By the normal forces, Sun Tzu means the direct use of one's technical prowess to fixate or distract the enemy. By extraordinary forces, he means indirect, unexpected, and surprise attacks. Use the normal forces to engage. Use the extraordinary to win. When we learn to use our internal power in creative ways, our external abilities become limitless. This is comprehending and using the infinite potential of the universe that already exists within ourselves. Scorpio energy is able to discover this by digging deep into our consciousness in order to become psychologically invincible. Those skilled in the use of extraordinary forces are as infinite as the heavens and earth. For they end and recommence, cyclical as are the movements of the sun and moon. They die away and are reborn, recurrent as are the passing seasons. The musical notes are only five in number, but their melodies are so numerous that one cannot hear them all. The primary colors are only five in number, but their combinations are so infinite that one cannot visualize them all. The flavors are only five in number, but their blends are so various that one cannot taste them all. When I have won a victory, I do not repeat my tactics, but respond to circumstances in an infinite variety of ways. In the context of battle, it is essential to use the extraordinary forces of sudden bursts of power to overwhelm the enemy and also be creative so as to not become predictable. On the inner psychological level, Sun Tzu is talking about assessing the limitless potential within us all. Scorpio's ability to probe into and understand ourselves and then using Mars's willpower is how we're able to turn our mundane troubles into extraordinary victories. Thank you for watching this presentation, and as always, I look forward to your comments.